Hello lovely people, this is gonna be a project that I'm very looking forward to because I love making Amprax. So this is gonna be an Amprax for the Honda Jazz project that we're doing the upgrades. If you watched a few previous videos, you saw how we installed the doors, how we made the subwoof enclosure in the spare wheel well, and in the previous one, I pulled all the gear out that he had, and I made this template to make the Amprax on. If you hear some uh, chatting in the background, is my little one watching a movie. Uh, anyway, this is gonna be a thing that's gonna last for quite a while, because I'm not planning to do it in all in one day. I have all this stuff, we're gonna go through everything, I'm gonna try to show you every little bit and piece that I'm gonna planning to make, because what I wanna do with this Amprac, I wanna do it pretty, very, very pretty. And in order to do that, there's gonna be a lot of attention to detail and a lot of little and frustrating wire runs and everything. So first of all, equipment. This is two amplifiers and a DSP. So the DSP is Helix DSP.2, which is an older model. It is an eight channel DSP. So it has only eight channels. It has this old style plug. And so we're limited to eight channels. Now, this is a four channel and this is a five channel. So that's already nine channels. So we cannot run everything. However, we're gonna run my plan is to have, because this is the four, uh, the five channel has lower power four channels and a sub channel. So this is like four times 60 plus 500. And this is a more powerful, it's like four times 120 or something. I did test this amplifier and all the measurements are in the distortion factory. So if you're interested, check that out. I will be testing this one and I will be testing the DSP as well. I'm gonna put all the data in the distortion factory. So my plan is to use the lower power channels for the mid range and tweeter and subwoofer. This four channel to use one channel for the mid base, one and two for mid base and three and four. I didn't tell this to the owner yet, but I'm planning to bridge it and have it as a spare for subwoofer if we're gonna potentially have an upfront subwoofer. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. But that brings us to eight. So that be like one, two, three, four and five. Uh, with bridged for the subwoofer, so we need two RCAs. So I'm gonna just run split the RCAs. It's gonna be five channels, so one, two, three, four, five channels. And then channel six, channel seven, and the eight, again, is gonna be bridged. So I'm not sure, uh, I need to double check with this manual. Uh, can it run with one RCA? if it's bridged mode or it needs two RCAs. But if it needs two, I'm just gonna split it and we're gonna have eight RCAs running there. Now all the other stuff that we'll be installing, so I have this, which is a Bluetooth adapter. It's quite old, it's my personal one. It does APTX and it has optical output. So the only thing we need is a five volt power that I already ordered, like a small DC-DC charger. So we're gonna run it from the main distribution block into this and optical into the DSP. Then we have distribution blocks. So these are mine. I'm not gonna use these specific ones, but I already ordered smaller ones because this is a four-way distribution block. I love these, but I ordered for him three-way because we need for two amplifiers and the DSP and the same for the ground. But this, I'm gonna keep it for now just for reference, just to have it like where it's gonna be because I need to have something. Then on this side, we're gonna make the custom RCAs. So I do have a video about custom RCAs, but we're gonna go through the whole procedure again because why not? So these plugs, I come on. These plugs are from AliExpress from China. So there's 10 plugs for I think eight pounds I paid for them. And they are the best quality from AliExpress that I could find. They're very, very nice. Uh, thick metal, not flimsy at all, uh, powder coated, so they're not scratch everything. And this fits the cable perfectly. The cable that I'm gonna be using is the one, it's my favorite one. So it's uh, Van Damme Pro Grade instrument cable, 
which has some uh, a few a few silver strands but basically uh, i cannot do with one hand you can see this fits perfectly now i'm not sure if i'm going to be using this bear or with the braiding because i have this braiding i have loads of different braidings uh in the beginning i thought i might be using the gray one silver one that i had in my previous install but i'm not sure because this one for example looks much better so black with silver and it then ends up something like this so i'm not sure yet if i will be using the braiding or not because the braiding might not fit i might be, need to remove these plastic thingies and run it like this if it's going to be with the braiding but we will see i haven't decided it yet so custom rca's uh power wire is welding wire so it is where is it uh, some kind of s flex made in eu 25 square millimeters so it's a four gauge wire it is overkill but why not so the welding wire the good thing is if you flex it it kind of stays flexed and this is exactly what i need for sharp bends when i'm going to be doing my amp rack like this see and it stays so if i'm going to put an amplifier it's going to stay like this and speaker wire is just normal ofc speaker wire i love the look of like this normal wire I don't know why, but in America, whenever you see people using speaker wire or RCAs, they use twisted pair all the time. And everybody in Europe, for some reason, I don't know, use coax cable like this and just speaker wire. So this is what we're going to be using. I don't think I'm going to be braiding these because these silver ones look good uh, as they are. Now, the amp rack itself. In the beginning, we wanted to paint it with like a bed line or maybe black paint. But then I, just, I remember that I have this, which is a big roll of, it's kind of fox leather. I paid like 20 pounds on AliExpress as well. And it has some texture. And I think it, this will look much better than any kind of paint. So I will be applying on the whole amp rack this and it's gonna be like like leather I want to say so now we're gonna start with the main layout So the main layout my thinking is DSP has a staple in the middle as always uh, the amplifiers one is on one side the other one is on the other side and then I will need to figure out the orientation depending on where things go. So I have these as well, terminal blocks. I love them. This is not the one that I'm going to use, but uh, something like this. I ordered uh, two of them times eight because eight channels, two wires each, two times eight, 16, because there's no single one that is 16. And depending on the orientation of wires that I need to decide now, we're gonna be putting these and the distribution blocks somewhere. So whenever I'm doing an amp rack, my first, always first thing is how the wires are gonna be run. I don't, prioritize the orientation or the looks of the gear the amplifiers and the dsp i always prioritize the wires how they're going to be ran now if you look at these amplifiers so we have rcas on one side in and everything else is on the other side and on this side we have the power and the speaker wire if i would put amplifiers like this upside down it would be the shortest run for the RCAs is just from there to there but then the speaker wires and the power will have to go all the way to wherever they're gonna go either that side either that side so that's why this is gonna go this side and even that this would be upside down which is not very cool so this is gonna be like this. So I was thinking at first to have power on that side because we have power coming from that side, the main power cable from that side. And it kind of makes sense to have the shortest run of power. But then I, f then I looked at this and if I will have to run the power uh, like to this amplifier, it's gonna go like this. And obviously the speakers are gonna be on this side, yeah? Like that, out. So if I'm gonna be running, so these have to crisscross because these have to go that way and this has to go that way. Even if I'm gonna put it like this, it's still gonna crisscross. So that's one crisscross. 
for this, it's exactly the same because power comes from here and it goes that way and speakers are going that way. That's another crisscross, which uh, I don't really like crisscrosses. So then I thought maybe let's swap it around and put it like this. So if I'm going to be using something like this, then um, the power to this is going to go straight up without messing with the speakers. Speaker wires going out and going to the side through here, and then they go up. And this, again, this one goes up, and this power goes to that side. So the only crisscross you're gonna have is between these speaker wires and these power wires. And these are gonna go straight, and this is gonna go straight. So I think even if I have power in the car coming from this side, from like wiring layout, it makes more sense to have the distribution block on that side and speaker distribution on this side. And the crisscross that's gonna happen for the power is gonna go like under that, under the under the board is gonna come out here, and speakers from that side are gonna go in there and are gonna go in there. So there's gonna be zero issues with noise, I guarantee, because in my car I had them crisscrossed wherever and there's nothing. The noise, when everybody's saying that, oh, you're gonna have noise if you're gonna crisscross like speaker and power wires, it's, it's nonsense, it's not gonna happen. It never happened to any of my systems, so I'm not worried about this at all. Now, with the DSP, is exactly the same. So we have outputs on this side, we're gonna have the remote control, and we have the high level inputs that we're gonna use and the optical input and the power from this side. So it will make sense if I'm gonna have DSP like this, uh, to have power coming here and going into the distribution block and the high levels going just straight up, maybe through the board in there. Uh, if I would need it to turn it upside down like this that I had in my install, I had it like this, I needed the RCAs to come out on the top. So what I did, I disassembled it and just literally flipped the internal because it's symmetrical. So you can flip the internals and you can have RCs on the other side. But for this install, it's gonna be like this. The distances, I will need to figure out how and what, but uh, the power again, so this side, speakers are going that side, RCAs, my plan with RCAs is to have something like this, that. So this is gonna be like this and run the RCAs. <sighs> like with this bend. So this, this all the way down, and then it goes like this into the amplifier. So yeah, the RCAs are gonna follow this round curve from one side, from the other side to the other amplifier. So they're gonna kind of spread out like that. And the speaker wires and the power wire are gonna be like hard 90 degree bends. Because what I don't like is, I don't know why, for some reason for me, when the wire has a sharp bend, to me it looks nicer. So like if you have this, it doesn't look as nice as if you would have something like this. A tighter bend to me looks nicer, but I don't want to do that with RCAs. So RCAs, because I wanna follow this internal shape is gonna be like this. And the power and speaker wire are gonna be sharp 90 degree bends. Now with all the wire, what I wanna do again, uh, I know what everybody does is they bunch all the wires together if they have like speakers, RCAs or whatever, they bunch them together like that and they either zip tie everything or put everything in like uh, braiding and you have like one run. What I'm planning to do is all the wires that I'm gonna be running, I'm gonna have them flat and next to each other. So like speaker wires, for example, like this and like this and something like this. So imagine four wires gonna be twice as thick and it's gonna be like one big run like this and probably next to the uh, power wires, but like flat. Same with the RCAs. Let me just uh, very quickly do that. Impossible to do with one hand, but if I'm gonna have four RCAs running, uh, something like this, all of them flat, one next to each other, following the curve and going in there. So that means that every length of RCA has to be slightly different because depending on the band, depending on the length, it will have to be. So I'm gonna be doing RCAs literally one by one. You do one, measure it, and then you do the other one. Now, if it's gonna be with braiding, I will need to allow uh, literally a few millimeters 
of gap between them and between the amplifier. So if I'm going to be using, so for this amplifier, it's going to be three runs because I have left, right, mid bass and one bridged if it's going to be one RCA. So three RCAs like that. And for this amplifier, it's going to be five RCAs because you have four, two mid ranges, two tweeters and one cable for the subwoofer. That's going to be one coming out. And here be, uh, in the very back, I'm going to split it into two to go in there. So here's going to be five RCAs right next to each other. So I just need to figure out the distance, how much I want to keep and just put the amplifier close to it because I would like there'll be no gap between the RCAs and the amplifier. So this is going to have a gap because I want to keep them symmetrical. So probably like five RCAs like this, a little bit less, but something like this. And the plan is not to use any zip ties because if you watch like a 12 volt wiring club or Dean and Fernando, what Dean does, he always uses million of zip ties. And yes, it does look cool, good and everything, but I did my previous install with no zip ties and I'm planning to do this as well with zero zip ties. And I'm gonna be doing that by using super glue, which is exactly the same what I did. And there's no issues, no problem. If you want to replace a wire, you literally just peel it off because if you're going to be using braiding, the super glue is going to be on the braiding and not on the wire. And I'm planning to braid all of them apart from the speaker wires. But speaker wires are cheap, so you can replace them with no issues. And just tack it with super glue in place and they're going to stay as they are. Now, the only issue is this Bluetooth thing because I don't know where to put it because it doesn't look that good anywhere. So maybe next to DSP or maybe next to the corner. I don't know yet, I haven't decided. Because we have space there, we don't have much space on that side because there's gonna be power runs and bigger, thicker cables, something like this. But the initial is gonna be something like that. Now I'm looking at it, probably I have to swap the 4-5 channel because I need more space on that side because the power wire is gonna take more space. So I think the 5 channel is gonna go to this side. And the smaller four channel is going to be on this side. Yeah, because the power uh, runs are going to be a bit thicker. And uh, something like this. So a line, like literally these wires are going to go straight up in there. And from here to the distribution again, straight up in there. And then I'm thinking the other speakers that are going to come from here, they would ideally need to go in there. So this will go here, probably. So they're going to be a second one because I don't have it with me. Second one is going to be here. Because if I'm going to put another one, one there, it's just going to be a bit too much off to the side. So one here and one there. And these are going to go straight. These are going to go straight and those crisscross and RCAs there. Or the same with a remote because this is gonna have power in, out, and remote. So remote in, remote out. Uh, probably with the DSP, I'm just gonna have four wires, all in braids, in one of those braids, and they're gonna come here. And for, with the power, there's gonna be a distribution for the remote, and it's gonna go in between the power wires. In between two big wires, you have one small one to run the remote and probably at the bottom so you wouldn't see it at all but yeah if i'm going to be using this braid what i will need to do is to make sure that when the rca is going to be next to each other they would be aligned in a way that these like two whites like this and all cables would be the same and follow because if it's going to one up is going to be like this one is going to be like this it's not going to look good so if i'm going to align them so all five are going to literally follow each other this is going to look very very cool so this is initial setup then fixing everything in i'm going to be using the wooden inserts so i'm going to drill a hole and everything bolted with little bolts i'm not going to be using wood screws and uh, I'm gonna do all the holes and everything first, check the mounting and everything, and only when I'm gonna have all the holes, I'm gonna be putting that thing on everything and just literally poke holes through it and mount everything with the screws. And on top of that, we're gonna glue everything on. 
So today, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just literally gonna check the actual mounting and spacing. I need to kind of draw on the board, the spacing between these. I need to uh, calculate five runs of this, how much space is gonna take, and then do like adjust to this, then exactly the same distance adjust for this one. I need to make sure that I have enough space for the power wire to go through. So again, adjusting up or down, depending on that. Uh, Finding these, the uh, position of this is doesn't like really matter that much because you can adjust it up and down. It's just the sideways is going to depend on this one. And this one, again, sideways depends on this position because it's going to go all straight. Because if you're going to have it a little bit to the sides, then the wires have to take a bend and it's not going to look that nice. So straighter is going to look much nicer. And RCAs, they're going to jump through the top. And I think they, they can, yeah, it doesn't really matter for RCAs because through this side, I need to run two power wires from this amplifier and four speaker wires. Yeah, so they can cross probably in this place. The speaker wires are gonna go through the bottom like this and the power is gonna go through the top and they're gonna be crossing somewhere here here yeah i need to decide on that but it's something like this so i was hoping to do like one video for the whole process but i can see that now i already have over 20 minutes just explaining how i'm gonna do things so is for this amp rack is gonna be probably multiple videos i'm gonna publish this with a plan and then i'm gonna try to do small little snippets of what I've done and combine everything into one bigger video and I'm gonna publish it when the whole amp rack is gonna be done because I'm still waiting for that, I'm still waiting for those, so they should arrive in the next few days or so. But yeah, as I mentioned, I wanna do like the wiring, I wanna have it perfect. All the angles, everything straight, how it's supposed to be, just for it to look very, very nice. So this is the initial setup. Sorry for taking 20 minutes to explain everything, but uh, you know, I take my time for everything. So now I'm gonna take my time with this as well. I have all the little ferrules for the wires. I do have some of these fork terminals. I have white ones and I have the golden ones. I'm not sure which ones will look better. I have loads of heat shrink. I have everything that I need. So today I'm going to be doing this and next week or whatever, there's going to be a second video with everything completed. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.